So my name is Alyssa Fine and I'm the Demand Generation Specialist. My expertise is in outbound, actually cold or warm calling, which I actually have a passion for. Most people hate it, so hopefully I can help you have a passion for it as well. I actually love it. I feel blessed to love my job and at SBI what I do is I hopefully help open up opportunities for our sales team. So what I wanted to do here today is to kind of share with you some of the timeless advice I've received over the last 20 years that you might not be aware of. So the first and perhaps the most valuable piece of information that I ever received was in call preparation. For call preparation, you actually want to divide your calls into two categories, the research calls and then the calls where you're actually trying to get an appointment or a meeting, okay? So the research calls and the calls where you want to get an appointment or, or a meeting. Why? Because you have a certain mentality and brain set that you'll have if you have the research calls and you'll have another one for doing calls in terms of trying to get an appointment. So now, let's go on to the research and some pointers that I've learned basically through trial and error. If you're calling at the enterprise level, you want to get as many, and you know what company you're targeting, you want to get as many relevant contacts as possible, okay? You can view it much like doors to a house. If you're, if you're a robber and trying to break into a house, you want to make sure that you know as many doors as possible. So as long as those contacts have some sort of value, they may not be the direct buyer, but they can possibly lead you to it, go for it. Now, for doing research in addition, what you want to do is a couple of things. When you're aiming for those titles, do a couple things. Number one, obviously use LinkedIn um, and searching there for your ideal target title. But when you do that, on the right hand side of the screen, you will see other related names. Look at those names too. And also be sure to read the job description of how the person, the individual contact, explains themselves and their philosophy to see is this really someone who can help me, that would align with me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's one of the things. The second thing you can do with harder companies is actually put the title in a search engine such as Google and then peruse down some names most more often than not will come up. So one of the really important things while you're doing research is to try and get the direct dial number of the intended individual. Why is that? Because it's going to increase your chances of connecting with that individual by 30 percent, which is significant. One way, if you can't get their individual direct dial number through any other ways, is to find out what the individual's extension number is. Often, their extension number is related to their direct dial line. So, if company A has a number that is 678-1000 as their general number, okay, and the individual's um, extension number is 968, then you can test the number 6781968 and there's a high likelihood that that's actually going to be their direct dial line. If someone answers, great, you can go into a conversation, be prepared just in case, and if not, listen to their voicemail as well. It will A, verify the direct dial line, and B, often people leave their cell phone numbers on their answer or greeting. So you want to be aware of that too. That's one more piece of valuable information. And rarely have I ever gotten in trouble for calling on cell phones these days because they're so interchangeable in business with an office line. So feel free to reach someone via cell phone, even if it's an unsolicited call.